All right, we're back. It wouldn't be, um, it definitely wouldn't be a, um, it wouldn't be a winter edition of the feedback loop if I uh, didn't have some sort of head cold. So it is so good to see all of you here again. Uh, Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. And we are getting things underway. Um, we've got a couple of questions today. Um, and then there's a few announcements that I want to make sure everybody is aware of. There's some t stuff that we're testing out. Um, actually, right now, I'm just going to lift up my phone here because I am uh, using a transcription service that uh, is called Otter AI. And I, I use this. I used this back in 2018. And I gotta be honest with you, I kind of poo-pooed it because um, it just wasn't very good. And then I've, uh, over the past few weeks, heard heard more and more people talking about it. I'm like, well, maybe they've tweaked it because they came out with a 2.0 and I said, well, well, maybe I should go back and, and take a peek at that. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm watching it run here and it's doing a fantastic job of picking up just everything. Um, I am curious of how it how it's going to act when I have multiple parties involved, but I would encourage you to take a peek at this for your research transcriptions. Um, like just run it if you're if you're on a call with somebody, run it, let them uh, let the let Auto AI pick up the conversation. If you're um, if you're if you're doing a um, in-person uh, research uh, interview, um, I would, yeah, hey, James, I'm, I'm happy that worked out for you. Um, if you're doing in-person research, um, I definitely would push you to use Otter for um, transcription. I think about Eve. Eve did like six interviews during her user interviews. And she, she talked about how it was a couple of days of transcription. Um, Otter gives you 600 minutes of free time each month. Uh, that's more than enough for your usage here in the program. Uh, so I would I would really encourage you to take a look at Otter. Um, there are some other ones out there, but I really um, I'm really wanting to try to shorten the amount of time that you have to spend going through your notes and if your notes are already written for you which is what would happen in a research situation you can go through and make minor edits you can go through and lift out quotes and things like that much easier so um and i, I do believe otter makes a recording of the session as well on uh, and there's like different tiers uh but but the it, it will give you basic text and it will give you basic it will give you an audio recording uh, just out of the box on the basics here, which I think is fantastic. Uh, so, so with that, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm watching it go as as we talk, and and I'll hold this up. I'm watching it go, and you can see that it's actually transcribing every word that I'm saying right now. Uh, we may end up uh, putting this to use in the feedback loop. I'm not quite sure because I will run through 600 minutes in about uh, like a, a hot second. Um, and I'm not sure I need much more than that unless I'm like transcribing every feedback loop. Uh, you'll let me know if that would be helpful though. Um, uh, but I, I, you know, how, you know, think about me talking constantly for an hour and what that transcription would look like. I'm not sure it's actually very helpful um, because gosh, uh, who would want that? Anyway, hey, welcome back. It is so good to see you. Um, I wanted to uh, peek in on a couple things. Rebecca had some questions related to, um, well, there's Auto AI. Um, and uh, again, when I talked about the pricing here. Um, you get a lot for nothing. Um, and they do have annual and monthly plans. Uh, but, but for your services right now, I think you can get basically everything you need out of the core free plan um to be honest with you now if you want to go super duper you can you can definitely level it up um but the the leap here is you get a 10x 600 minutes or 6,000 minutes um i'm really curious if 6,000 would be enough if i wanted to transcribe everything anyway um regardless of that I'm talking about auto ai but i want to hop over here and talk about polylang 
because Rebecca has has found herself in a situation where her CrossFit site now needs to be multi-language. And it's, uh, it's an interesting quandary because there are a lot of translator plugins for WordPress, um, but her site isn't completely built in WordPress. It's built in Elementor, which is a plugin for WordPress. So it's like we're getting into this realm, Rebecca, where it's like you, you have you have a you know a, a bucket of things that you can use, and then you have a bucket of things that you can use with the thing that you've already used. So because we've already used Elementor, I I you know I'd have to take some some options off the table. But what I discovered this morning in digging around is Polylang, which um, has over 500 active installations, also has a Polylang Connect for Elementor. So it allows you to connect the two together, and um, and that's got 10,000 active installations. So there's definitely some heat here. Um, the thing that I want to focus in on is basically how this works for you because with polylang you essentially you essentially will you know you know let's just go into some of the some of the screenshots here if it will if it will blow them up for us so you basically choose a language which is important um and then you let's see it won't let me uh cycle through these so i need to escape how do i escape oh my goodness um, I'll just go back. I think I'll go back. Come on, WordPress. See, WordPress itself is slow. Um, so you, you, you select the default language and then a the secondary language. And I do know for a fact that it does support right to left and left to right. So there is the ability to flip that back around. Um, from there, you... So basically, we'll hop in here. On your pages, you'll have languages, and then you'll have translations. So you can create Hebrew versions of the page, and then it will be dependent upon a selector that you'll need to add to that navigation. You know, do you want the Hebrew page or do you want the English page? Um, so, you know, I'm certain that there's a way that it should be able to select um, Hebrew if their if their browser is set to Hebrew anyway. It should like automatically flip there. But if not, you definitely need a you definitely need a widget up in your navigation that allows them to select English or select Hebrew. Uh, being that you have two, uh, you don't have you don't have a bunch of languages. I think you could get away with just having a selector that flips the two. And I know that that's what Polylang Connect does. It allows you to, um, and oddly enough, I, I think this is the this is the plugin demo that I was watching. Um, it allows you to put that widget into the navigation and switch the two out. So you don't have have to have two links there. One that says View in English, View in Hebrew. But if you're in English, it'll show a tag for View in Hebrew, and then if you're in Hebrew, it'll show a tag for View in English. So, so that switcher is, is built in. Um, obviously there are other ones out there. Uh, this was the one, this was the one that I spent the most time with kind of digging into. Uh, but again, if we, if we find our way back over to, well, I have to find my way back to Firefox cause that's where I have your page open. If we go over here to pages, I'm gonna go all pages. Um, come on. Again, that that hosting service is, you know, we're not even loading the page right now. We're we're just loading the WordPress install and the hosting service is like. Oh. Um, when we get over here to home, when you have Polylang installed, doo -doo -doo, there will be a there will be a languages tab over here, and that would give you. That would give you the ability to have um, to create a different version of the page, and that's really what you need to do. You need to basically have a, a version of the page that is in Hebrew, and then you would edit it 
and then sub out all the text. That's that's all it's that's all it's doing is it's acting like a switcher at the top. Um, it's not going to live translate on screen. Uh, so so this is really this is really where that comes into play. But you have to have a plugin installed, and then once you have that plugin installed, it will it will drop in a language switcher here, which will allow you to make a different a copy of the page. And essentially, after that point, you go in with Elementor, and you begin to edit everything in Hebrew. Now, there's a second thing here that you need to be, um, yeah, we're going to leave. There's a second thing I need you to be aware of. Um, the typography that you have, and I can't claim to remember what typography you're using. I'm not sure if it has Hebrew glyphs in it or not. So that is that is another thought that you need to have in the back of your head of this 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 um yeah, yeah elementary sign this font which is um let's let's look at this it is family default I'm not sure it mu this must be something that Astra loads in um. So with regard to this, does this have a Hebrew version? I don't know. And that's something that I would look out for when you flip it. Also, um, you've got plenty of room up here for a, for a, you know, over to the right of uh, contact to be able to have a, um, a view in Hebrew, view in English link there. That's where it would go. And I do know that, um, if I come back over and forgive me for not having this all just loaded in one browser, I've, I've got some stuff in Chrome and st some stuff in in, um, in Firefox today. But this Elementor um, plugin, uh, it's a plugin for Elementor. It basically gives you the tool, so the, um, that the tool that you'll need up here, it it will be over here in Elements. So it will add that. The other thing to keep in mind, when you create a language switch in, um, in Elementor, all of this will be in Hebrew. Okay, so it, it basically, it assumes that, oh, you're, you're Hebrew, you're, you, you, you know all the Hebrew. Um, I'm not sure, if, I'm not sure if you're building, if you're really fluent in he Hebrew or if if uh, if it's if it if, if it's a second language that you speak around the house, you might not know what some of the stuff is in Hebrew. Um, you know, like I, I wouldn't necessarily know what I wouldn't necessarily know that that is slides um, or that is a pricing table. Uh, some some of the icons they they don't jump off the page at me as what they are. Um, you know, some do like block quote. I know what that is. Um, but you know this looks like page it, but it's really template template could be page testimonial looks like a chat bu bubble so anyway make sure that you're comfortable with this oddly enough there is a plugin that will switch that back because because there's plugins for everything um which one of these things doesn't work with the other i i know i i know that wordpress uh, polylang works with the polylang connect for elementor i don't know how far down that chain of plugins past that will function together but i do know that those things work together uh you also had something else that was broken uh you said that it was related to yeah dana here so let's let's take a peek at this um I'm going to duplicate this because I, I don't, that's the problem with this is I, I never am quite sure what I'm looking at. Um, I'll delete that away just so we load it. It may take a second, but I also, while we're doing that, I want to, um, I want to th figure out what was the drop down? What was the plugin that you had here? Um, okay, that actually loaded relatively quickly. Um, 
Okay, so it's there. Um, it's all caps, though, man. Like, eh, I, I, like can't that? That's painful. That's a lot of all caps. Um, but it's definitely there. So when I when I saw your note and it said everything's broken, I was expecting it to not load. Um, 2005 was certification. So it seems like there must be like there's probably. A, Dana began her training career. Span title. And excerpt. I want to go back and review the syntax for this plugin. Uh, to do that, though, oddly enough, I'm going to need to jump in, put admin on this. I need to go back and look at your plugins. And. Uh, while we're waiting, yeah, hey, that loaded pretty quickly. I'm just, uh, again, I'm checking Otter AI and it, it's really blowing me away how accurate this is compared to last time. Okay, last time it was a hot mess and uh, maybe, I, maybe I had to speak clearer now. I doubt it though. Um, I, can, I can barely speak English, folks. Come on, let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, all right, so you had a plugin Collapse-O-Matic. Okay. So Collapse-O-Matic, short code. Um, so what we need here is we we need to hop into Collapse. Well, I'm just going to look for Collapse-O-Matic. Uh, oh, plugin oven documentation. I think this is what we're looking for. And it is. Okay. So this is going to give our, give us the documentation for how this is supposed to function. Um, so this is expand trigger text. So the ti expand title. Um, let's come back over here. And of course I've got just a billion things open. Expand title. Looks like you might just be missing a quote. Um, so, and why is it all caps? I, I, it's not all caps here. So why is it all caps there? Um, uh, let's see here. It seems like this excerpt would be inside of it. So the target content, so your triggers here, your target content should be below it. Um, so this is on, off. Close. Read more. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I'm making the, I'm going to make the judgment call that you are So we want this slash expand to basically wrap And it looks like it does Okay so, what's the problem here? I don't see an issue. Um, okay, let's just update it. I want to see if we can get anything to show up in your live site. Because right now, it's there, but you don't have any text here. Um, it might, I got to be honest with you, it might be something. 
might be better to like have something that says meet the coach um, and then have some text here but you know I, I, I see where the I see where the you know the, it's kind of janky um, although a photo here would probably help too to be honest with you uh, let's go ahead and refresh this to see if it, that update works did not work um, let's continue looking at this server error I've got a 500 server error here that's no good and again this goes back to the service provider you know um, we've talked about this and I, I understand uh, you know nobody wants to pay for hosting okay I get it uh, but but when this sort of stuff happens you can't update the site and actually nobody can access the site um, let's see if it craps out. get to Tejal's question here in just a second as soon as we figure out what is going on with this um, I want to come back to the plugins here I just want to I want to try to grab this and bring it eh, let's just let's bring a simpler one over um, expand title we're just gonna bring this over and we're gonna put it into this one um, now that one I understand why it's all caps because it's clearly all caps but um, yeah, I, there's got to be something about the style here um, uppercase there it is okay if you really want that to be uppercase, this is where you're setting it at. But I would really encourage you to not do that. Um, it, it's just it's over the top. Let's see if we can update now. And I'm getting a server error. Um, that makes this impossible to, to, to work on, Rebecca. And it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You, you're not causing the server error here. This is your... This is your domain provider, not your domain provider, but your WordPress hosting provider. And if you can't, I mean, you could spin your wheels here all day long. And if, if you're not able to update the site, what's the point? Um, okay. Oh God, and it's inserting these things. That's no good. Is it doing that on the other side? First of all, I don't want visual editor. Okay. This is what I want to see. But I can't, uh, I can't update it. Sorry, Rebecca. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to come back out. I'm going to try. Yeah. I got to leave the page. I'm going to try to get this going again. Um, I don't understand why you were getting that, why that error was being thrown. Uh, let's go to pages. Let's go to. I'm just going to go to home and edit with Elementor.
Okay. All right. Uh, hopefully the hosting provider will not throw a fit this time. Um, all right. So let's edit. Let's edit this. I don't want. I want the text editor. Um, I don't know why font weight 400 is getting thrown in there. We're gonna get to get rid of that. Um, it's got like span style in here. Let's get rid of that. Span. Get rid of that. Um, server error I if I can't update the site what can I do um, I will have to come back to this Rebecca but this right here this in server error internal server error again not your fault but your hosting provider is crap in the bed like right when you need it to actually function um and that's that's not acceptable um i just want to see it maybe it is could it be a widget thing i just want to come up here and say meet your co caches um update meet your coaches update Okay, Rebecca, we will have to circle back on this um, because it's not allowing me to, to run, to update the site, which allows me to see if the changes that we've made are functioning. Um, I would say that stay away from this, stay away from this visual editor, stick over here in text. Um, my, my big worry is that I'm, I'm never a fan of the visual editor of any sort, like uh, Word documents, Google Docs, it inserts a bunch of crap into your into your um, code, and you're here trying to use a short code. So when I saw like the spans and all that crap in there, that could have been what was actually blowing things up. Um, but again, without being able to hit update and test out that theory, I I can't um, I can't actually begin to solve this. So moving forward, uh, I would definitely have a conversation here about the hosting because the hosting is, the hosting is falling, down, falling down right now. The other thing I'm, I'm curious about is, is there an element or outage? So just for grins, I'm gonna go over here to Twitter and I'm gonna search for Elementor uh, just to see if anybody else is, ha is reporting an issue with that, with that plugin this morning um uh, yeah i'm not seeing i'm not seeing anything for elementor uh, aside from elementor celebrating four million installs um it looks like everything is fine for elementor this morning um, one more time. Don't have an internal server error. Oh, God. All right. Rebecca, we'll have to circle back. Um, but again, a couple of things for you. Uh, I would definitely, um, and I'm, I'm actually just going to drop this in, uh, for double checking your work so that you're not waiting on this. Um, so feedback loop, uh, Rebecca. We're throwing uh, internal server errors on the site. Check with your WP host. But look into these for guidance on the issue we're not able to fully test 
test this morning. Ugh, I hate doing that, uh, but it's literally all, it, like, hands are tied. Um, it's, I'm sure that it is, it literally is the, um, it's the combination that you have here because every, everything was in expand title, but then there was also a quote and then there was also a span. Those things, um, I, I really, and I've got more down here. Like, where is this stuff coming from? Ugh, there's so much junk in here. No need for this. Oh, and there was a there was the missing quote. The quote was in in here. Okay. The other thing is like really consider getting rid of that that all caps thing. Like if you do that, you go default. Uh, immediately easier to read. Um, I just want to update one more time. Come on. We'll circle back on this, Rebecca. Um, so that said, um, you also have the plugins for um, uh, Polylang. I think Polylang is going to be your answer. Um, and then, um, and then we have a question here from Tejal. Um, so regards to idea board case study, you're back to pencil and paper because you realize everything I have feels quite clinical and I need some personality to it. Also, it's too long. Okay, we talked about this yesterday, okay? Um, this concept that everything is too long is, this is the base, okay? The long base, the foundation. Um, most houses, when you build them, they get smaller as you go up. The, the, the roof pitches in and comes to a, a point. Um, I want to show you something we talked about yesterday. Because I, I, I want to like steer us away from this big worry about length. All right? So here we have... Here we have the case study and the highlights. We were talking about this concept of project highlights yesterday. And your case study is meant to be the foundation that many other things build on top of. For instance, one of the things that I'm looking for your case study to do is I want your case study to power any presentation deck that you may end up building to uh, for interviews or for presentations at, at like a meetup or something. So you have your case study and that's great. But you also have these individual slides that you're going to build out of that. And when you look at this in prototype mode, I think it's important to realize that, okay, so your intro might be re relevant and like the second thing might be relevant and maybe the sixth thing down here might be relevant, but you're going to edit out of the case study. It, the case study is the repository of everything that you edit out for, okay? Additionally, we talked about this concept of highlights. And highlights is, and it is a piece of the portfolio that lives between the home page and the case studies. And the highlights is a single page that allows you to walk through the most important aspects of each project that you have. Um, so rather than saying, I worked on this, and I worked on this other thing, and I worked on this other thing, I would encourage you to talk about, you know, the things that I've, what I've learned. You know, highlights could be a what I've learned page. But what I've learned is, you know, I learned about, um, about the importance of uh, bringing in native culture and you could, and I'm thinking specifically to the, um, the, to, to the Bergen thing. And you had this hole in the storytelling. You couldn't go from one to the next thing. You were looking for something to pull it together. And you, you went back and found this thing about native culture. And, and that's where you like lift that out and you, and you begin to, uh, talk about it here, or it could be, it could be a reference to the, um, finding the right tone and 
you had to go through all these vo- vocals uh, before you found the right person to put the to put the vocal track onto that onto that video. That's where you talk about it in highlights. It may be one of two things that are actually in your case study, but you you're lifting out. Yes, the case study should be a clinical thing. The case study is going to be a a, a a step one, step two, step three, step four experience. Because it's power, it's it's the foundation for all the things that you're building on top of it. I I wouldn't worry about I wouldn't worry about the case study meeting all audiences because I I believe that the case study is there for people who want more. Okay, but we need these other experiences, these other things. Like you, you talked about, um, you talked specifically. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm currently using uh, what kind of stuff should we edit out? And I really believe that I really believe that we shouldn't edit out from here. We should make some other experience that that the case study that links through to the case study. And basically, what you're looking at is you're saying, okay. I have my homepage, and here, here's who I am. Here's the, here's my, uh, my project highlights. Okay, and then here's like how to contact me and all that stuff. I click on project highlights. I'm going through, and you're talking to me about your growth as a person through the highlights. Okay, you're talking about the things that you really are interested in, not the in-depth story of each project. But if they want to know the in-depth story of the project, they are opting in at this point to say, oh, I want to know more about this. And that's where they land on the case study because they've opted in. You have not shoved it in, in their face as, hey, here's the really long, here's a really long experience for you. They've said, I want to know more. You gave them a really interesting look at you through projects in the highlights. But the case study is for people who want more. And I wouldn't necessarily worry about editing that away yet. Now, at some point in time, you may decide, oh, I want a different for- formulation of this. That's okay. Maybe that's a, another layer that you slide in. But but I, I don't necessarily think the case study needs to be edited down. The case study is the foundation. I don't want a smaller foundation. I want a smaller house on top of the foundation. So, you know, I, I look at I look at this like the foundation is everything. It's the it's the backyard patio, it's the garage, it's the tool shed, it's the it's the house itself. And then you have all these experiences that sit on top of that. So so uh, I hope that I hope that addresses the question. But I, I do think that there is a there is a knee jerk reaction the moment that you look at your case study and you go, man, it's really long. Yeah, it's there for the people who want to go go real deep. Okay, I want I I'm more interested in okay, let's let's knock out idea board and let's talk about your story. Like what are you what are your highlights? What have you learned? What are you really interested in? I want that page to really to really reflect and power people wanting to see I want to know more about this idea board I want to know more about the Bergen video project I want to know more about that hackathon that you worked on Uh, looking specifically at you John because uh, uh, John's been asking questions about his portfolio too Um, but this highlights page that's that's the that's the nugget that most portfolios are missing most portfolios have a Hi, I am I am a designer, and here are my case studies. I want the backstory of how what is it that you are really good at. Like, forget about the case studies. Like, yes, tell me about the the stuff you've worked on. Show me examples, but show it to me in such a way that if I want to know more about it, there's somewhere for me to go. Okay, and this highlights page would allow you to talk about all your projects in a relatively tight space okay so so really think about like 
if I if I pick two things from Bergen, if I pick two things from Idea Board, what would they be? How would I how would I present that information? Okay, and um, you've you've given me inspiration for a for a very interesting side project for myself because I feel like I feel like it's really challenging to to ask because I, I tell my story basically through referrals like like my my students talk talk about the referrals and, and I, I let that talk okay but but that's not really going to that's not going to work here because we we don't want to page of referrals here we want your work so I have an interesting I have an interesting uh, uh, project ahead of me based on this highlight uh, approach but but for the record I I would I would keep head down pushing forward case study because this highlights page is going to be the dis the distillation it is going to be the tightening up it's going to be way more visually interesting because it's not going to talk about ooh process and here's the flow and here's the pro it's going to talk about hey here's what I've learned as a designer and you're going to you may point to multiple things that are common between the projects rather than talking about the projects as separate things think about that for a second um you know so often there are very few things that i would i would say this and, and Ted, you you, you uh, feel free to to counter um but i know you've worked on a lot of video projects it, it's highly unlikely that you've worked on video projects that were that were not in some way shape or form building on top of work that you've done before the same applies for design there's very little in design that I've ever worked on that didn't build atop something that I learned somewhere else so I look at I look at highlights as a way that you can merge these together now and the other thing I like about this is everybody's highlights page is going to look entirely different because it's going to come down to, well, how do you want to theme it? And, not, and I'm, not I'm not talking about theme in terms of look. I'm talking about theme in terms of topic and tone. How do you want to, how do you, like, what does the content look like for you? Are you going to talk about it? Like, I learned this one thing and I learned that one thing. Or are you going to talk about it in working on these projects? Here's the lessons that I pulled away like like and that's the that ultimately is the gist of this um i, I remember jared spool talking specifically about uh i don't really want to know what you've done i want to know what you've learned and this highlights approach gives you the opportunity to take that nugget that's at the bottom of each case study that the spools of the world have always said Oh, that's what I'm really interested in. I'm interested in what you learned and put that up front. Okay. And I'll be honest with you. What I've learned isn't nearly as important to me if I cl can't click through to see a more in-depth detail on what you're talking about. So long story short, I'd keep your case study. Okay. I wouldn't like trim, 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 trim. I would focus on, okay, what's that? What's that story about me? And, and this, this kind of replaces the concept of about me. Because about me tends to be like, oh, you know, I grew up and uh, my dad bought me Legos. And that fueled my love for design. And that's great. That could be like a paragraph at the top. But here's what I've learned about design. That's like, that's like the real deal. That's the real deal. So... That's what I would encourage. Highlights, um, and then and then like keep pushing on case study. But that's just my two cents on it. Um, I really I really am a big proponent on highlights, as I am a big proponent on Otter AI, which at 46 minutes is still just humming right along. Um, yeah, that's. That's pretty amazing. Okay, um, so I'm gonna, we're gonna circle one one more time back to Rebecca because I'm not I'm not ready to give up I'm not ready to give up on this. 
Uh, if I could just find Firefox. There it is. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go back to pages. All pages. Come on. Work for me, damn it. <laughs> um, also, something that, um, while this is loading, something that uh, we released yesterday, user flows with Flowmap. Uh, the nice folks at Flowmap have already been commenting on it, which is uh, fantastic. Um, I didn't tweet this out or anything. They must have just found it. Um, but Flowmap, that's working its way into the curriculum. Uh, I'm glad that um, I'm glad that that was that was useful. Um, it was, um, you know, I, I got that over to James yesterday, um, and and yeah. So let's get back. Let's get back to uh, this. Is that no? No. Um, Elementor is struggling mightily I would say um, I'm just gonna try to I'm just gonna try to edit this and it's so let's come over here let's get in here I want to delete that away I think that's causing a problem these spans are killing me um, I also think that it really needs to be down here in excerpt and we're going to update and we're praying for not a server error and we got a server error uh, all right um, Rebecca again I'll check back in on this later I'm hoping that whatever is causing this internal server error um, which is either it's either your hosting provider or Elementor um, one of those two is down at the moment. Um, I'm guessing it, my, my trouble is I can't guess that it's Elementor if, uh, or it, I can't guess that it's your hosting provider if the site is loading and the site currently is loading and it's got a decent speed on it. I mean, it, it didn't take it very long for, to do that. So now, now I'm kind of worried about Elementor. Uh, but it is the the other thing I would say is it the the information's there. I just don't think you have the short the short code properly um, properly um, rendered. So I, I I do believe that there needs to be uh, there needs to be this content between the, the the tags that's not there right now. So if you could get that sorted out, I think I think you would be fine. Also, look out for those spans and like that that bit of code that's been injected in there. There was a missing quote mark. There are all sorts of little things in there, little gremlins in there that are probably causing the issue. Okay, um, I don't like it when I can't. Uh, I don't like it when we have technical issues that keep me from being able to fully push through our changes. But that is unfortunately where we are at today um checking in with obs so without uh without dragging this out any further um it's been the feedback loop uh this edition of the feedback loop uh brought to you um bizarrely by otter ai which i'm still watching go, uh, uh, go all the way here um i will be back tomorrow tomorrow is going to be an interesting feedback loop because it's not going to be a live recording um, I will be, I, I'm going to be, uh, in transit. So I will record, I will check in and I will record a feedback loop. I will post the feedback loop. Um, but it will not be a recorded session like this one or, or it will not be a streamed session. So tomorrow morning there will be, will be a feedback loop, but it will not be streamed. And I do, do apologize about that, but I want to make sure that we get the feedback loop in and, um, and sometimes when you're streaming, it can dip in and out as you're as you're in transit, and I don't think that'd be a great experience for everybody involved. So, um, so I will see you all again tomorrow. Take care.